What is up the internet? It's your boy Josh Wolf coming to you live from Gold Coast, Australia. This is a talk about live streaming, streaming live, live at LinuxConf AU 2020. Woo! Make some noise! I'm your host, Josh Wolf. I am a developer advocate at a company called Kamunda, and I work on a product called ZB, which is a microservices orchestration engine, cloud native, say that five times, backwards really fast at midnight, under a full moon, in a pentagram, surrounded by 13 black candles next to a baby goat, and a portal will open up and Half-Life 3 will come through. True story. Okay, you can join the conversation for today at twitch.tv forward slash the legendary Josh Wolf. Yes, that is my handle on Twitch. Ask me anything. I'll be engaging with the chat throughout the stream. Big ups to the literally thousands of people here today live on the Gold Coast and to the millions of people watching on the internet. Many of you not even born yet. I mean, live is a moment, but archive videos are forever, baby. Or at least until the apocalypse when the aliens do the EMP and they wipe all of the hard drives. Okay, let's move on. It's time for a cutscene. Cutscene. Mm, 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 mm. Okay, I go to my ecam live and let's have a look here. I have to go to this one. Ecam live. This is, so I'm going to create a cutscene here. Use during the stream today. So when I go to preferences, I can click on show everything when sharing the entire screen. And now you should be able to also see, yeah, the ecam live stuff. Okay, great. So I'm going to look for a cut here. Image. Images. Cut here. This one I quite like. Um, vector stock. This one. Dreamstime.com. Let's check these guys out. So I actually did this last night and I went through and I got uh, a couple of these images. It cost me $34 for 10 images for one month. Uh, I had to sign up for a subscription, and then I was like, okay, I got my images, now I'm gonna cancel the subscription. So I went into the cancel thing, it said, would you like a 40% discount on your subscription for the next month? And it was like, okay, I'm in, and nope. So I click on nope, and then it just, nothing happened. So it errored out, and then I went into the console, there was an error in there, I had to paste it to cancel my subscription. And I wrote to them and I said, hey, um, is this actually by design? Like I have to contact you to cancel my subscription, but I got it done and I got the images. So I'm gonna add that as an overlay. We'll get rid of the previous one so you can see me doing it. So I'm gonna add an overlay. Drag this across to the right monitor so you can see it if I can. Okay, the people here live are getting to see it. You're probably not getting to see it in the stream, but you can take my word for it. I'm browsing through my files into my workspace. I've got a YouTube folder in here. Where I keep all my kind of images and stuff, and I got one cut here, 16.9. i open that. There we go, beautiful, beautiful. That's my cut here image. Okay, I'm gonna turn that off for now, and then what I'm gonna do next is I'm going to go to my stream deck, if I can get to it. Let's try this. Stream Deck controller. Configure the Stream Deck. And I'm going to go back to my main kind of page that I'm using. And I'm going to create a new... It's a, it, the Ecamm Live kind of uh, settings. I'm going to go Show Hide Overlay. Drag that. Drop it in. And I'm going to choose the Cut Here Overlay. Now I have a button on my Stream Deck. When I punch it, I get Cut Here. Listening to the dulcet tones of Shingo Nakamura, Japanese trance music. As everybody knows, the key to a successful life is to drink lots of water and listen to progressive house music, particularly from Japan. So here's where it all began for me. Now let me turn off my overlays so that you're not looking at that anymore. You don't need to see the, the meta streaming stuff for now. Preferences. This is an interesting one. I'm using two monitors here, and one of them is behind me. That's not what I wanted to do. 
It's actually in front of me. Okay. Um, I'm a Muppet. Here it is. Lessons from my first year of live coding. Now, this was an article by Suze Hinton, a.k.a. No Op Cat. And um, this is the one that really started a thousand streamers. This was in 2017. She wrote an article about lessons from a year of live streaming on Twitch, live coding. And then this one got followed up by a second, um, a second article by popular demand. So many people were asking like, okay, those are your lessons, but how do I do it? Like, what are the actual kind of tools, techniques? What's the software? How do you configure it? How do you set it up? So I started with this article, my Twitch live coding setup, and I basically copied everything that Suze said to do in here. So there was kind of the basic hardware that you use, and then she recommends using open broadcasting software. So OBS is uh, open broadcaster software, OBS Studio, and look here, you can see it's uh, available for Windows, Mac OS, and Linux. It's open source, it's on GitHub, it's got a lot of contribution. Mac OS does tend to lag a bit behind the Windows and the Linux support, but it's very extensible, it's very powerful, which is means that it's got a difficult learning curve to start with, but it's a great place to start because it's free and there are actually, um, it's easy to extend. I wrote some extensions for it using WebSockets. It's got a WebSocket server that runs in it. You can find those uh, on my GitHub, which is github.com forward slash jwolf. That's J-W-U-L-F. And uh, open source, this stuff is written in Node.js. It, it, uh, it controls the, the stream deck, the open broadcaster studio, and you can do things like the, the overlays like I showed you just before. Then there's a couple of other options that you got, which are OBS Live. So a few people have kind of extended OBS, Open Broadcaster Software, with their own, I don't know if you call them proprietary extensions. Um, at least I think this one is they integrate Twitch chat, they you know add a bunch of value to the whole thing, and it's kind of like, a, I don't know if it's a platform lock-in lock thing, but it definitely gives you more value, easy to use. The only thing about it is they only target Windows. So if you're on Windows, OBS Live could be a good option. It's at StreamElements.com. And then there's another one from Stream Labs, who are kind of like Stream Elements and Stream Labs are two kind of competing companies in the same space of doing like Twitch streaming kind of widgets. So they have their one called Stream Labs OBS. And the only difference I can really see, I'm running on Mac here and I got like some Linux machines. I don't have a Windows machine. But the, the main difference here with this OBS Labs one seems to be that uh, Stream Labs OBS, sorry, is that it has cloud backups. So you can back up your profile to the cloud if you put it onto a new machine, it will sync across. And then what I'm using today is I'm using Ecamm Live, which is a, a really kind of slick Mac um, streaming platform, but I started on OBS and uh, I still use OBS from time to time, but I've been experimenting with Ecamm Live. So I would recommend if you're getting started, start with OBS Studio. It's free. You can just download it, get started with it. It's a great place to start from. Next question is, where do you stream to? So the, the kind of granddaddy of streaming platforms, of course, is twitch.tv. A lot of people streaming games on there, and there are a lot of people streaming programming on there now. So you can check out twitch.tv. Um, you know, another option is YouTube. The thing about YouTube versus Twitch is that on Twitch, they'll keep your streams for, you know, like 30 to 60 days. And then after that, the archive will be deleted. But on YouTube, archives are forever, or at least until YouTube decides that it's not commercially viable to host your, you know, 16 hour mega mix streams that nobody watches and like uh, takes you off the platform. But in the meantime, you know, you can put your streams onto YouTube and then you, know, you can see I'm streaming live now and then you can create playlists on there. People can discover your content. It's the long tail. You know, the internet is forever. Most of your viewers probably haven't even been born yet. And uh, most of mine definitely haven't. And then, you know, people can come here and, and go through your content once they discover you. And then, you know, a great way to be able to stream to both platforms at the same time is Restream.io. That's what I use. And it gives you the ability to stream to a single RTMP server, which then kind of multiplexes it out to multiple platforms. So I'm streaming to Twitch, I'm streaming to YouTube, and I'm streaming to Facebook. And uh, we're also streaming this live on the LCA 2020 stream on YouTube as well. 
So you can see in here, I got those three set up. And when I click on add channel, you can see there's a ton of different places you can stream to in here. Um, and maybe, you know, you might like even use this as a way to discover other streaming platforms and more content that you can look at where are other people streaming. That's a, you know, always an interesting thing to check out. next question is audio how do you do audio real important aspect of the stream so you know in Suze's um, no op cats article she has a condenser mic most people are using condenser mics you can get a real cheap one to get started with for $70 from amazon.com this one here is a USB condenser microphone it's got a, a shock mount here to isolate it from, from kind of environmental sounds it's got this kind of cool boom stand here I've got one of these at home that I use, which enables you to move it around your desk, get it into the right kind of position, and then put it out of the way when you're not using it. And it has a pop filter, which stops it from going pop, 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 that plosive kind of sound. I'm not using a pop filter today, and in fact, I'm not using a condenser mic today. I'm using uh, what's called a dynamic mic. It has less pickup range, uh, but it, it rejects a lot more sound. So with your condenser, you can end up picking up environmental sounds. And here, because we're live in the room right now, we got like sound coming through the speakers. And if I were using my condenser mic, it would pick that up. I, I tested this before I came in at home and there was just a lot of feedback using the condenser. So I grabbed a, a dynamic mic, which is um, a good option. But this is a great place to start. It's a USB mic, no need for any kind of converters or anything. Plug it straight into your machine and away you go. Background sounds for the track. It's a pretty hard hitting Japanese trance going on at the moment. Here's a great place to get some sounds from if you're into EDM music, which is kind of my jam. It's not everybody's thing, but um, you know, it's my thing, I like it. Uh, Monstercat.com. These guys are like an EDM label and they have a great setup for streaming, um, you know, creators. So they have like what's called Monstercat Gold. So you can download Monster Cat songs in your preferred format, early streaming access, and here's the important one, use our music claim free in your creative content, directly support the artists, et cetera, et cetera. So, um, you know, Monster Cat Gold content creator license, up to six of your channels and use our music in your content. It's literally $6 or $5 a month to get this. And as long as you have the license at the time that you publish the video, they won't demonetize you or do a copyright claim on it, and that's forever. cool kind of uh, playlist feature on here where you can create playlists. I got a playlist called Coding, which is where I, um, you know, I play this in the background while I'm, while I'm coding. Let's switch over and check out some of that stuff now, actually. I'll give you a sense of it. So I'm playing through the YouTube Music app here. This music is from Silk Music, but let's try something from a Monster Cat. Maybe something a little bit chill. Mm, Cloud None, they're pretty chill. Mm. Using Daylight. See what's happening in the chat. The music is great. You should move the webcam a little to the right. It's picking up some background. Oh, okay. Um, this way? The other way. The other right. How's that? Okay. <laughs> awesome. Killing it. Great. Okay. Let's check out some Monster Cat sounds. Mm -mm -mm. Well done. Let's just hit it and see what happens. Audio. Okay, so what I've got set up here is, oh, we'll get onto that in a minute. So I'm gonna have to go into, uh, I'll, I'll, uh, I'll switch to that in a little while because I need to change my audio setup, which is kind of the next part, so we'll leave it for that. Let's stick with the Japanese trance for now. music is coming from Silk Music, they're another electronic label, and I really got into coding to Shingo Nakamura's kind of uh, mega mix, melodic house kind of stuff, 
And so I went on to Bandcamp, found them on Bandcamp and wrote to them and said, hey, I've got this streaming channel that I do. I do coding. I'm not directly monetizing. I love your music. It's just so great to code to. I'd love to feature it on my channel. And I got something back from the A&R guy and he was like, okay, that's great. Um, here's how it's going to work. Like, we'll let you stream it on your channel. That's fine. But we'll put a copyright claim on it. And then, you know, we'll take any of the kind of royalties that come from it. So if you have a look here on like a previous stream that I did uh, late last year, you can see in show more music in this video, it like automatically detects which songs have been played in there. And then I get like an email that says Silk M Music has done a copyright claim on your video, but none of these videos are monetized anyway. So it's basically like, a you know, they let me use the music in here and I'm really grateful for that. And neither of us is making any money out of it, but you know, it's all about the internet fame. Am I right? Let's talk about audio ducking. It's the thing that happens with your GPS when you know you're listening to music in the car and then it says Turn right in 500 meters. And then the music goes down and then it, you know comes back up afterwards. So to do my audio ducking here, what's this got? Oh yeah, audio ducking. It's also known as side chain compression. That's like the technical term for it, but audio ducking or mic ducking. So let's have a look at that. Dun, dun, dun. Why is my cut string still up? There we go. Cool. So I'm using, I'm on a Mac, I'm using Audio Hijack to do the, this is from Rogue Amiga. Rogue, sorry, Amoeba, not Amiga. Rogue Amoeba. So I've had to set up a couple of inputs here. So I've got my voiceover input, which is the microphone. Then I got the YouTube music desktop app here coming in. I got the, uh, the mic going through a multiband compressor to give it more of a kind of a radio sound. And then it goes into this thing called ducking here. And one of them is the input. The other one is the one that gets ducked. This, the ducking volume is like the, the if I put it right down, when it ducks, it just disappears. And then I can bring it up and then it doesn't duck as much. Once I bring it up to here, it's kind of not even really noticeable. And then the overlay threshold is like, at which point does the ducking kick in? So if I put this right down to here, the ducking doesn't really kick in. Somewhere around there is pretty pretty good. So, you know, to get this to work, I also had to use another uh, Rogue Amoeba thing called Loopback, which enables you to do audio routing and software. Extremely powerful, powerful, powerful software, and you can do lots of different things with it. Um, let me see if I can get OBS to run at the same time as Ecamm Live, playing it fast and loose and dangerous today. Right, okay, so here in, in OBS Studio, the sidechain compression, it took me a little while to find it, but it's so much easier. Like I have, you know, my, I got two channels in here, the loopback audio, which will stream in the music, and then my mic, which comes in from my, you know, my USB codec. If I click on loopback and I click on filters, then I just add a compressor filter. So, you know, you go add, compressor, got a compressor in here. And then it's just side chain, ducking source, mic aux 2. That's all it takes in OBS uh, Studio, open broadcaster software. So you don't have to worry about getting uh, additional kind of software to do it if you're using OBS. So that's a real great place to start. Another thing about OBS while I'm here is you can do like a studio mode where you can preview your next scene before you actually activate it. So, you know, if I have a look in here, I got a secret screen. So it's kind of like the cut screen that I was using, but you use it to hide your screen if you're entering API details. So here's in Ecamm Live, I've got it set up. So I'm typing in my secret password or whatever, uh, copying an API key from somewhere, you turn that on to block the screen. If I can preview here like I can, um, do a transition, so turn off the secret screen. Now you can see here, 
this one here on the left, that's what's about to show, that's what people are seeing on the stream, and then I click transition, and bam, now it's live on the stream. So this one's kind of good, it's like a DJ, DJ preview, you know, where you listen to the next track on your headphones, so OBS has that, Ecamm doesn't seem to have that as far as I can tell. All right. camera action so here's what it looks like with no lights behind me let me go to my desktop um, scene so that you can get a more of a sense of that we go to desktop default scene so you know look it looks okay you can kind of see shadows and things happening so a real easy light to get started with is this this light that you can get from Amazon it's ring light ring light for phone it's like $25 and it also has a camera mount on it you know when I got in here today my I was gonna stream from my FaceTime camera but it's somewhere down here and it was like looking right over the top of the green screen so this one actually has a mount for camera as well as the I not even seeing that sorry let me get back to the uh, kind of scene for you yeah there we go this is the Amazon $25 light. It's got this ring light and it's got like a camera mount, you know, with different kind of adapters. 25 bucks, clips onto your, onto your desktop and then you can like connect it to USB or to power. So here's what it looks like. I've got two of them actually running here. So I started with one, then I bought a second one and then I ended up getting another light, which um, I'll show you in a second. This is what it looks like with the, with the ring light. So that's with one ring light on one side. And there's with the other ring light on the other side. And these things have like color control, so you can go from a warm light, like a cold light, if you can see that difference. It's kind of one's got a little bit more kind of color to it, the other one's like real white. I started with that light, um, you know, doubled down 50 bucks for the next one, and then took it to the next level and got this thing called the Elgato Key Light, which is this beast here. It's like the Death Star of lights. It's kind of like, that's not a light, this is a light sort of thing. And that's what that looks like when it's on. So it gives you this like kind of steady kind of illumination, and then you can use the ring lights that you bought, you know, to fill in the kind of sides for yourself. So the next thing is like a green screen. So if you want, you know, um, it was Jeff Ward did that Planet Planet aggregator, it was written in Python, it used to aggregate blogs across the kind of GNOME ecosystem, and then one of the things in there was that you could be a floating head, and I was like, oh my god, when I grow up, I want to be a floating head on the internet, and this is how I did it. I got this green screen here for like, it was like 60 bucks, and it's, it's massive, it's huge. It comes with this uh, stand that you can use to set it up, you clip everything onto there. It comes in the mail, and one thing about it was that I had to um, kind of iron the, you know, the sheet that came with it, and it had all these kind of crinkles in it, and like, if the lighting wasn't good, it would go kind of weird, but you know, it, it worked, and it works. So here's what happens if I turn my green screen off. You can see there, I got like a green screen behind me, and then when I turn it on, I can become, look ma, I'm a floating head on the internet, I made it. Then the next level is you can get this kind of pop-up um, green screen. It's sort of, I call it semi-portable. I was carrying it over to the venue where we're doing Linux Conf Australia today and it felt like I was driving a truck. Like my turning circle was massive. I went into Macca's to get a coffee and I was like, I'm gonna leave this thing outside parked in the parking lot. It's pretty handy because it pops up and down. And you know, if you've got like flatmates or a partner, they're gonna really appreciate it if you can put that thing away when you're not using it. And then I'll look at one more thing while I'm here, which is the Stream Deck. Now this is like a control surface that you can use, like I've been like opening links, you know, transitioning between scenes, overlays, all that kind of stuff. This is the Elgato Stream Deck that does this. It's a control surface, you can get one with 15 keys, there's another one which is a mini with six keys, there's like the maxi one with 32 keys, and you can even have folders so you can like, you know, go down into different scenes and things. And there's Stream Deck Mobile. 
which is a Stream Deck with 15 keys on iOS, so on your phone. So that is a great place to start from. And there's an SDK, you can write your own plugins um, in JavaScript, you can do compiled ones in Objective-C, and you can even uh, control this thing with like an open source node library from NPMJS. Twitters, the I know a couple of people who use NCS music.com available on Spotify also for music. Let's check it out. Recommendation from the internet. Thanks, Rage CTL. NCS, no copyright sounds music, I think this one is. Got a, uh, a YouTube channel that you can listen to as well. Yeah, no copyright sounds music without limitations. Let's see if we can find them on uh, YouTube music and listen to some stuff. Copyright sounds, here we go. Coming right up. Pretty chill, pretty chill. Taking it down a bit. So here's our widgets. Widgets are things that you can add to your uh, stream. You can get like chat embedded on the on the page. So there's stream elements is one place you can get them from. And then the other place you can get them from is Streamlabs. If you saw my countdown at the beginning, this comes from streamelements.com. And one difference between um, OBS and Ecamm Live is that with OBS you can embed the stream elements as a scene. But the problem I had whenever I tried to do that is it would actually crash or lock up the, the, the streaming software. It just couldn't handle, couldn't handle the awesomeness with these kind of like animated things happening. You know, it's got like live things in here. Like this is a live chat which will update if anyone um, posts a comment or anything in the Twitch chat. It'll actually appear here in this widget. Okay. <laughs> like really bringing it, bringing the, bringing the bass. We're in the home straight now, so these are some of the kind of streamers that uh, I watch. So this is Noop Cat's channel, Chill Programming Stream, JavaScript and Arduino Library Coding. So Suze Hinton, Noop Cat, she's uh, an, uh, an Aussie developer uh, living in the States now. She usually streams on Sundays at 12 p.m. US time. She was actually streaming at 5 a.m. this morning when I jumped on there, you know, to check it out. and. Um, it was great to see her on there. I, I got uh, Amazon Prime and you get like a free Twitch subscription you can give to someone every month, so I gave it to her this morning. Well deserved. And then uh, here's another one that's really big, MPJ, Fun Fun Function. He started out streaming on YouTube, or not streaming, doing like prepared kind of um, videos, tutorial kind of stuff. And then he went to live streaming on Twitch and went full time actually, this is his thing. So here's actually a no op cat and MPJ coding session. And then he does this thing called Failing Together. So he had Dan Abramov from React on there. And they just try to do something. And he usually does not get it done. But it's it's all about like the exploration and just showing people that, you know what, I don't know what I'm doing either. It's like we're all just trying to figure this stuff out. And then here's a cool way that you can browse it is you can browse by category. And the science and technology category has like tons of like um, science stuff and a lot of programming. There's people doing like Nintendo 64, Commodore 64, assembly language programming, like everything. And one of the real interesting things about it is how many Twitch streams are people programming tools for streaming on Twitch? It's kind of meta. C 
CS do have a variety of playlists with different music styles for people to choose from. Twitch stream writing bots for Twitch streams. Yeah, totally. That's actually how uh, I got my channel name, which is Alt Super Meta, because I was um, live coding on my Twitch stream while it was streaming and modifying it. That was uh, kind of fun. Okay. So that's pretty much the, you know, the kind of prepared content that I had. And I just wanted to, let me switch to my desktop, uh, my default scene, so we've got a picture of me here. So yeah, I wanted to just share a little bit about kind of what I discovered by streaming live uh, on Twitch. So, you know, when I started streaming, I started watching myself in the stream and I would be sitting there coding and then I'd be watching it afterwards and going, this is extremely boring. It's like this guy sitting there staring at a screen literally for minutes at a time. So I was like, okay, man, this is not going to be really compelling viewing for people. So I'm going to have to start like verbalizing or vocalizing what I'm thinking so people can have an access to that. So I started just talking out loud about what I was thinking. And then a lot of the time I was like, why do they have to keep changing this API interface? Like I just was using this thing the other day. Now everything that I know is wrong or it doesn't work anymore. And then as I was saying that, I was like, okay, this is not helping anyone really just complaining like this. So I was like, you know what? That's the price of progress. That's what progress looks like. That, you know, tomorrow doesn't look like yesterday and today doesn't look like yesterday either, especially if you're programming in JavaScript. And then I sort of started to notice that I had this internal mood of frustration. I was like, I'm really frustrated right now. And that's just perfectly normal. And what I discovered from doing that was that when I had this experience of like what you know a lot of people call uh, imposter syndrome was really when I was sitting with something that was difficult I was frustrated and I was like I really should know this like people are watching my channel because they expect me to like know what I'm doing and I was just like you know what I really do not know what I'm doing and that's okay because you know even the programming languages that were around when I started programming are not around anymore and the languages that I'm programming in now didn't exist when I started and that's just the way that it is and you just got to keep learning all the time and sometimes you're going to get frustrated and whenever I'm sitting there trying to pretend that I know what I'm doing or pretend that I'm not frustrated it's like super frustrating once I started to be able to say that I don't know what I'm doing and that's okay it's just a part of the whole game that like gave me a real freedom around that and what I noticed from doing that is that uh, that was where my imposter syndrome came from when I was feeling frustrated, didn't know what I was doing, and I was scared that if people found out that I didn't know what I was doing, I was going to get fired, people were going to think I wasn't good enough, something like that. So the more I kind of gave myself permission and freedom to say, I don't know what I'm doing, and that's okay, I can figure it out. Like, you know, this is not some alien technology from Area 51 that requires like four arms or like 13 fingers to operate. It's made by other human beings. I can figure it out. So that really gave me a lot of freedom around that. And that was something that I discovered through streaming and like just having like this stream of consciousness. Cause I didn't start out talking like this when I started streaming, it was like this. noticing that that was how I was being in the stream it's kind of like reflection you know you're like you're able to like introspect yourself by like watching yourself in action hey thanks for tuning in this is the live stream talk about live streaming live at Linux Conf Australia 2020 and you know here we're following the the maxim that we have in documentation which is show don't tell so all of these cut screens that I've been putting in here become natural kind of locations for me to let's have a look here if I go back to my desktop sound. screens so these are the natural places where I can insert markers in the YouTube video and then once those markers are in there I can do direct links to those uh, to those points and each of them is kind of thematically organized so it becomes like a tutorial about how to do that particular thing and so you can just stream it 
live and you know do it a few times it's like the more you do it the more easy it becomes the more facile the more kind of facility that you get with it and the first stream you do won't be great the second one won't be great maybe the hundredth one won't be great but the ten thousandth one will be amazing and it's just a matter of getting there and having consistency to do it and um, I just want to acknowledge my son who's here in the front row he's uh, 17 years old and he's kind of like my Twitch mentor. And one thing that he told me was, you gotta have a regular schedule. Like you gotta have a scheduled time and you just gotta do it. So I created my schedule and then every week I would just do that stream no matter how I was feeling, what I was thinking. And just the, over time, what that does is it just creates, uh, you know, practice and skills. So jump in, don't be shy, make it happen. Just get over the fear, feel the fear, do it anyway. Start really small, open broadcast the studio, $25 light, camera in your laptop, maybe a $60 green screen if, like me, your goal in life was to be a floating head on the internet. Stay frosty, and we'll see you soon.